Welcome, geeks, to another exciting episode of Rockin' the Code World with Donnet Dave. I'm David McCarter. I'm glad you're all here. Uh, and uh, I hope you watched the uh, Code Quality Conference. I, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, yesterday, uh, I think Simon and I are both a little tired from that, but uh, we're here. So, uh, and we'll take uh, the show's going to be taking some time off after the show, too, uh, uh, because of scheduling issues, which I'll talk about at the very end of the show. So, let's get into it. So, today, for the second time, I'm so excited. Uh, I have my good friend Magnus Martinson back on the show today. He's uh, one of my favorite people. Uh, not only does he know what he's talking about, but he's an awesome, cool guy. And and I I miss him because I haven't seen him in person since uh, uh, the C Sharp Corner Conference in 2019. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to the C Sharp Corner Conference this year because I'll be able to hang out with him for I don't, I don't even know how long uh, many days, like 10 days or something like I don't know. Uh, but it's going to be fun. And uh I hope we're not sick of each other afterwards. I, I don't think so. He's uh, he's a really nice guy. Um, show 64, August 20th. I can't believe summer's almost over. What's going on? We've barely had a summer in San Diego. Um, so I hope everything's going good where you are. I, I know some of the uh, 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 places in America are being flooded still uh, uh, today. And so please be safe and... Uh, you know, get to higher ground. <laughs> Luckily, I live on higher ground a little bit uh, near the beach. So I, I think I'm okay if we get any flooding here, which doesn't really happen where I live. All right. So um, don't have a lot to talk about before Magnus comes on. I'd like to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about our friends of the Ukraine. And I was watching some stories about the new Ukraine this morning on the news. And, you know, things are not going there and uh, good, going good there. It's been six months now. It's ridiculous. And, you know, it's just... I know I don't talk about politics on the show, but you know I, uh, you know I really think that uh, uh, America and, the, and Europe needs to do a, a no-fly no zone. But that's my opinion. You know, uh, you might have a different opinion, but I'm just sick of you know seeing people die in this country. And and uh, so so if, if you can support the Ukraine, uh, please uh, do that. And uh, if you can't do that, then just keep them in your your thoughts thoughts and prayers and. Uh, so this terrible uh, war uh, can get over as soon as possible. Uh, speaking of the Code Quality Conference was yesterday, if you missed it. Um, it's up on YouTube. It hasn't been broken down yet into individual sessions. Uh, I know Simon's working on that. I'm not sure uh, when that will be completed. Maybe you can tell me in the private chat. Uh, but it was yesterday, and I thought the conference went really great. All the speakers were great. All the sessions were great. Uh, we gave away some prizes. And uh, included from uh, Submain.com and also Telerec, and uh, so I I had a great time uh, doing the conference and uh, I'm bringing this special conference to you all because you know there's really isn't a conference in 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 our .NET world uh, revolving around code quality, which I think is unfortunate. So this is why we do it. This is our second time. Last year we had uh, over seventy two thousand viewers, which I think tells me you know that uh you know uh people need this information but it's just not being uh done at conferences i actually checked a conference yesterday that's happening uh next month and not a single uh a session on code quality which i i think is is unfortunate so uh, i hope you watch the conference and let us know how you like the conference and let us know if you want more of this kind of information uh, on C Sharp Corner, I, I'd be more than happy to spearhead that, but I need I need some feedback from you all. So uh, you can get me on Twitter or you can email me. Uh, my email address is at the end of the show. So uh, my uh, version two of Spartan for .NET six is out. Uh, there's a new article on C Sharp Corner explaining uh, a lot of the new methods, if not all of them. I think uh, in this version of Spartan, I I hope you're uh, if you're not using, I hope you give it a, uh, a try and look at the article uh, that's uh, released. You know, it's basic, Spartan is basically all the common code I've been writing since .NET 2. Yeah, .NET 2. I've been um, having this uh, repository out there in one form or another. Uh, so that's how long I've been doing open source uh, software. So uh, so I hope you give it a, uh, 
give it a try and uh, let me know if there's anything I need to improve or anything I need to put in. And all of you or more, I encourage you, all of you, to get a copy of the source and do a pull request if you want to add something to Spartan. Because, uh, you know, I write these things not only for myself. Uh, so when I go to companies, I can use this code that I know works. Uh, and uh, so I hope you will use it too. All right. And with that, I guess that's it for uh, 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 the slides of, in the, so Magnus, <laughs> sorry, I'm not feeling great today. Magnus is a, is a Microsoft Azure most professional uh, since uh, the start of Azure and a Microsoft regional director. He's a consultant architect and product development lead. As an international speaking, speaker, he travels the world passionately teaching, uh, networking, uh, learning and experiencing with all of you geeks. Uh, his passions include connecting with audiences and organizations and conferences such as Cloudburst and Global Azure, which uh, he's behind Global Azure. I spoke at Global Azure a couple of times. Uh, he is one of, of course, he is, of course, also very passionate about good food, wine and great company. I can tell by his uh, post on Facebook. So welcome, Magnus. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is so good to be back. It's good. It's good to see you. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of want to spend a, a minute or two at the beginning just catching up because, you know, I, I don't really check Facebook much anymore, and so I don't see your pictures much anymore. So what's going on in your life these days? I mean, it's all good. I, I just want to start by, unfortunately, um, and letting you know that 2019 was the year that the c -Sharp Corner Conference was canceled due to COVID. We have not seen each other since 2018. Was it not? No, no, it was 2019. Was it 2019? Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, because I went right, I went thanks. to C Sharp Corner 2017, 18, and 19. Okay, good. Brilliant. So okay. we did go 19. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, oh. it was 2020. It was 2020. Yeah. It was canceled. Yeah. Um, dude, everything is is good here. Um working a lot, obviously, from home. This is this is a common people know me like this now. They know this backdrop here, my IKEA closets and my home office. And, <laughs> of course, uh, IKEA. Oh, <laughs> of course, IKEA. It's it's got its ups and downs. You know, I do miss travel so very much. Yeah, it's it's begun a little bit. We've traveled a little bit now, and I'm so excited to go back to India soon. Ooh, that's gonna be yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, if we have time at the end, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um yeah. And uh, how's your family doing? Everybody's good. Um, I have a, a, well, we don't actually, in Sweden, we don't start high school in ninth grade, but in 10th grade. Hmm. So I have a 10th grader or a high school student and, and uh, another one in, in eighth grade. So they're doing good. And then, you know, my wife and everything. Um, the upside of the pandemic, which is a weird thing to say, honestly, but it is that it's been nice to be closer at home with the family. I did travel very much in 2019, mm -hmm. um, a lot, a very big lot, um, and not by choice, but but by passion, really. It's not yeah. that I had to, but I wanted to. Um, pandemic kind of kept me grounded um, for a bit, and that's been good too. Uh, be here in these uh, years when the kids are. Well, while they still care, right? Soon they'll, they'll, go, they'll go off and they'll do their own thing and they're like, yeah. ah. They'll go off and never talk to you again. That's swing the, by that's, when they need money or something. Else. <laughs> well, I, I saw the, the picture you recently posted of your daughter. Uh, I think she's your oldest daughter, I think. And uh, uh, yeah, so I. It flies time. and it, it does fly. I can't believe my kids are in their 30s now. And uh, it's. It's it's crazy. My granddaughter is turning ten. Uh, oh the, my gosh! Uh, like next week, you That's know. And good. so I know I can't and I can't well, believe it. You know, it's it's. It's gonna I be so good to, is... to to catch up with you again and meet up in in person, like three D. Yeah. You know, this two D stuff we got going on here, actual depth perception. You yeah. know, I like that. Yeah, I I really miss it. You know, I I uh, you know I I will admit that I'm a loner, but you know I do enjoy. Uh, you know, going out and especially, uh, you know, with, you know, uh, professionals, you know, with well, software professionals and going mm -hmm. to conferences and networking and learning and, and see what else, what else everybody else is doing, you know, yeah, and, and, best. and I don't know about you, but I just don't like doing conference sessions from, from my home. You know, I like being there. I like looking at people. I like interacting with people. I like networking with people. I do not, like I gave a session yesterday at the Code Quality Conference and 
I, I did enjoy doing the, the, the session, but I, it's just not the same. Right? It's not the same. Not at all. Not by a long shot. Yeah. It's, the, it's the beat of the conference, the, the hallway track, the conversations, the, right. the happy faces and that stuff. And you, you miss all that. I mean, I'm looking at a freaking camera right there, right? <laughs> I know. And I can, I can see your face just below here now, but, and that's nice. But, but if yeah. you're speaking at a conference, then it's like, right? Yeah, well, you don't get any audience feedback, so I don't know if yeah. I'm doing any. I'm, I'm doing a good job or not, you know. And so yes. I kind of feed <laughs> off of that. That's you know, I, I was talking that maybe last week to my guests that you know, whenever I speak, if anybody notices next time I come to your town and speak, um, I never stand at the podium. I never stand at the computer ever. Everything is it, is just by a clicker, and I spend the entire time walking around looking at the audience, mm -hmm. right. I, yeah. I look at them. I look at their eyes. I look at their expressions. You know, I pick out sometimes if I need uh, uh, to call out on people, I pick out a couple people I'll call out on. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I really miss that part of it, you know. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. But we're coming back, I guess. Hopefully, slowly but surely, fingers crossed and all that stuff. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it's not going, it's not going in the wrong direction with no. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, Slowly but surely, yeah. that's all. Yeah, and I I think some conferences like you know the one I was looking at yesterday that didn't have any uh, code quality <laughs> sessions. You know, um, you know some conferences are doing like a hybrid mode now, which which I kind of predicted. You know, when COVID hit, that when we do get back, you know, they're probably going to do that. You know, uh, just because they can reach more people, and uh, and. Uh, and mm. and to offer that to you know people who just don't have the funds to you know travel you know 15 hours in an airplane to uh right. go to a conference right so um yeah. it's no, more accessible i guess what i'm trying to say it's more accessibility to conferences yeah. when you do stuff like this right for sure but we no, I but i don't want it to be only that i want it to be hybrid right i we still need the in-person uh, part of it for the people who want to do that especially the speakers we do. We do. Yeah. 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 So Mahesh says virtual conferences do not have the energy uh, transformation. Yes. That's wow, no. true. Yeah. It, it I don't get the energy it. transformation. That's, that's a, it, I mean, it's an interesting worldwide learning because we, we didn't have any pandemics for, mm -hmm. for a bit, for a while. And so yeah. we had gotten into this mode where we could take that for granted, not having mm -hmm. any pandemics. But if you look at history, obviously they come back with infrequent intervals, and they come back again, and they will. There will be another pandemic of some sorts in the in some future somewhere. Yeah. But this was a this was a, a really big wake up or shake up for the entire planet. It's like, whoa, we can travel and what? Wait, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's not only the travel part, but it's also like the manufacturing part. I mean, oh, America, yeah. America got screwed. You know, because we do so much manufacturing in, in other countries yeah. like China and that, yeah. you know, I know the government here is, you know, working on uh, pulling some of that back and, you know, passing uh, new bills and stuff to kind of encourage companies to uh, bring yeah. some of that process, you know, bring some of that manufacturing yeah. back into uh, America because of this problem. Right. Exactly. And, and that's yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're not going to store it in a warehouse, you're going to have to manufacture it. Right. And so. You got to pick one or the other, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, we could talk about that stuff all day. So uh, I that's I, I I forgot to say at the top of the show that don't please ask questions during the show. You know, I, uh, Magnus is a cloud expert, and uh, and so please put your questions in there, even if you have questions about the the uh, conference in India in October. Uh, but don't ask political questions because Magnus and I will never shut up. So, uh, <laughs> and this is not that kind of show anyway, because I know Magnus, I see a lot eye to eye on a lot of things and, uh, uh, we will never shut up if you get us started on that. So, oh my gosh. Uh, I can't, I, I will never forget the, 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 almost the whole day where we were sat at that bar at the beach in Mauritius. Yes. We were jab jabbering the whole, we were three, with three of us, right? We were yeah. jabbering the whole day, uh, drinking drinks. We must have looked like a couple of or three <laughs> drunks at the end of the day there, and sun and drinks. And it was it was so fun, but we didn't show up. It was so fun. Whole day. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we not, <laughs> we we talked nonstop from like lunchtime until nighttime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. 
went swimming in the ocean and uh, uh, our, our, the other speaker there had one of those uh, waterproof pouches and he was taking pictures and, you know, while Remember you're in the, the ocean. Remember all those frictions? Or the, the, the... Yeah. Oh, man, they kept, I kept stepping on those. I could not not step on those things, right? I was pulling that crap out of my foot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's why conferences are great because you get to do stuff like that, right? Or like, uh, like, uh, like I did the next day, uh, you know, I got to walk with lions, which was one of the most yeah. awesome things you could, I could ever think about doing with, uh, like animals. Right. And, uh, and you can't really walk with lions here in your own, own house, you know? No, there's nowhere you can do that. Really. I've only, I only heard of two places that's, uh, Matt, uh, Mauritius and I think Taiwan, but in Taiwan, they drug the, the, the lions and I won't do that. I'm no. not going to support them drugging the lions. No, so, no, no, no. no yeah, these so, lions were nice, the ones that you were with. Yeah, they don't drug them. They don't, uh, you know. No, they, they were just friendly. You no, know, yeah. Well, they could, you know, it, when it, you know, when I explained about that to people, I don't know if they believe me when, you know, these three lions came out, you know, a, a male lion, a female, and then a cub a female, and they could give a crap we were even there, right? Yeah. It, they, they were so bored with us and – yeah, it, they could care less. <laughs> so very, very, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, so uh, what's going on with the cloud these days? I know I have a list of questions, but is there anything you want to talk about before I kick off some of those questions? Well, I mean, what's a, what's a, what's a, the reoccurring theme is kind of what we're going to talk about here today, honestly. Um, it is that that this stuff is, is hard, right? It's it's a lot. There's so much to do in the cloud, with the cloud, when going to the cloud, when migrating there, and so on and so forth, that it is definitely challenging. And, and the fact that it's um, comprehensive, there, there's so much there, it's huge, there are so many things to consider. The fact that that is what it is, the nature of it, is kind of what puts food on my table, right? So mm -hmm. as a consultant, that's what I do. I try to help or I do what I can to, to help companies, organizations to make the ride smoother uh, when kind of ascending to, to the cloud for them, right? Yeah. And, and it is such a big and, and challenging domain that it, it takes a lot out of anyone to do it. And you always feel like there's more to be done <laughs> and you never seem to be able to, it's not, there's no catching up, right? There's like, it's this, it's a whirlwind the whole time, but I mean, obviously it's worth it. It's, it's valuable. It's positive. It's great and challenging. It, right? is. it is. And, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, thinking about talking to you this week, you know, the other, th one of the things I was thinking about the other day was, uh, uh, you know, back when uh, microservices were kind of first introduced and people started using them, and I was even interviewed uh, back then um, uh, by a magazine, and they would kind of wanted my opinion as an expert about microservices, even though I, I've only used them in one project. And uh, but you know, I I I could see the value even back then. I could see the value, and I still believe in the value of microservices. But I yeah. also saw the dangers, and so now two or three years later that's coming, you know, people are now talking about the dangers and I was going, yeah, you don't, you don't just don't take your entire monolithic app and turn it into microservices. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to anybody. I mean, to, well, to me. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't make sense. And, and you have to, and that's the challenge, right? That you have to kind of know what you're doing. Um, there's a real risk that you're kind of reading the buzzwords and, yeah. and then saying, that sounds, uh, you know, exciting because we haven't, we're not doing that. So let's go there. And, and and probably, you know, for a lot of people that are listening, microservices, what are you talking about? We've done that for years and years. Yes, a lot of people have done it for years and years. But believe me that there are so many organizations out there that haven't touched that at all. They're not right. even near it. They're not yeah. not even beginning, not even thinking about it. Like mm -hmm. they, they want to, they, they're on the, the brink, the, the, the thought process of maybe starting that journey. Right. So there's lots of organizations that haven't done any of that. No, no, they haven't. Um, and, and even some organizations, um, I don't know if it, they're doing it uh, because they want to or they're getting pressure from uh, the companies they work with. But, you know, and I, I struggled with this when I was working at Verizon for two and a half years because they kind of saw they kind of thought the same way, which I'm about to share. And that is um, 
you know, just taking your monolithic app and lifting and shifting it and putting it in the cloud, that's not the cloud, right? No. That's that's just putting that's just putting your that's monolithic app hoster, into a virtual machine in the cloud. You just move it to another hoster. It's the yeah. same thing. And, and I, I've been saying I've been saying for years now, in fact, that it is completely it's entirely possible to, to go to the cloud and miss all of the best benefits. Right. Um, and that's exactly what you can see, right? So we're we're lifting and shifting our our virtual machines and we're running the same IT that we did on premises or with the other host or whoever we use, but except now we're doing the same thing in the cloud. And that doesn't make any sense for anyone, none, no. none, not in the least. No. Uh, you, you, it'll work. It'll, sure, it'll, it'll work. work great, yeah. fine. Yeah. And if yeah. you can start uh, taking advantage of some of the fundamental advantages that you can get, for example, the reserved instances where you can get, like if, I, if you, commit to one year or three years of consumption for your virtual machine, you'll get a really, really, really mm. big discount. And that's mm. great. That's great. Yeah. You, you're, you're running on very low cost and you get some of the benefits. Wonderful. Love it. And you're not taking care of the hardware. So you got that covered. Yes, you're getting some benefits, mm -hmm. but all of the really good ones, all of the best ones, you're not reaching yet. No, not at uh, all. So there's yeah. much more potential and just migrating and checking the box saying, okay, we're in the cloud, we're done. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I, I know of one company that spent years and I who knows how much freaking money just doing lift and shift. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going, I don't know why you did that. You know? I, I need to say though, David, let's let's be be fair to sure. people because I I, I, I was talking to, for, to, to, I was speaking to, for example, a specific company, I can't name them, but they were really big. And so they had about 4,600 different workloads that they needed to migrate to the cloud. And they had a data center exit looming, you know, coming yeah. towards them really fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see many scenarios where you have to move, you have to hustle, right. right? Just do it, get it done. That's fair. If that is your, if you're, if you're in that pinch, you don't have a choice. Just go there as fast as you can. Right. But that's going to be even worse than trying to migrate in an orderly fashion. Now you're just moving crazy, crazy as much as you can, as fast as you can. That's yeah. going to hurt you even more in terms yeah. of cost and optimization. Forget about it. Performance stuff, come on. Yeah. Uh, your cost is going to be really high and not, ex not at all where you want it to be. So if you must do it, then do it, of course. I, sure. I sure. get it. But then... Then the work starts, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're not done. Migrating. It's kind of what I've always yeah, said. You're not done dirty. when you do that. Yeah, yeah. migrating dirty is, is essentially click, click, click. You know, that's that's dirty migration that works, but it's so far off the, the, the target. Oh, yeah, and yeah. So yeah. important to understand that. And and again, no insult. You know, if you're in a pinch, you're in a pinch. I, sure. I feel you, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Well, that's exactly what I kind of did in this project I did at Verizon was they were they had a looming uh, 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 a dead a deadline with uh, uh, some license they had with uh, Oracle. And so this right. this was this wasn't a cloud per se product, but um, but they were you know, they didn't feel like paying Oracle another three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a license. And so yeah. I had to quickly create this application to get rid of that. I mean, yeah. to basically do the same thing. Uh, but but not do not use Oracle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and that's that's uh, it, it happens. It's it's definitely suboptimal. Everybody knows it. But let's get on with it, and then yeah. and then and then make it good. And then right. after that, right? Making so it yeah. run and making it making it good, not the same thing. No, no, <laughs> yeah. So if you if you're doing the lift and shift, I guess is what I'm trying to say is that's not the end, and make sure you have a plan for what's happening after that. For right? sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that's um, where a lot of the interesting stuff kind of comes in, right? When you're mm -hmm. talking about like, so how do you change your organization and how do you adapt to this new world and how do you take full advantage of it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to, and it's it's so interesting in this space um, because technology, right? I, everybody loves it. We're engineers and so forth. And we love tech and cloud tech and new things we haven't done before. That's beautiful. Let's do it except that we maybe don't have at least enough numbers of, of experienced cloud people on staff. 
That's so true. we're understaffed. Um, we just, it's just the way it is. Like uh, the bulk of our, our, our people haven't used cloud enough to be mm-hmm. really knowing what they should be doing. Right. Uh, right. And that's fair. So now there's a, a huge upskilling game, of course, to get everybody on board and, and, and empower them and know that they can do, do the, the things they need to do, but also for the company, for the business to make sure that we get, get to the cloud and again, like in an orderly fashion, right? Yeah. This is where all the interesting stuff happens because technology can be complex, can be advanced, can be you know bleeding edge and 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 things that are challenging for sure. However, technology tends to be fairly straightforward. Hmm. You make a plan and you kind of follow that, and then you you learn something, and you maybe you you might nudge the plan slightly and, and okay so we need to change the the assumption we had was so and now we need to go there okay but it's kind of straightforward right yeah. you follow a backlog and you work mm-hmm. people <laughs> <laughs> are, are are never straightforward never no mm-hmm. and that's the challenge really to marry uh the organizational change of technology with the organizational change of people and culture um, sure. because those need to, they need to come along and that's definitely a massive challenge because somewhere, somehow, someone sat, sat down, probably some suits somewhere. If your company <laughs> is sufficiently large, you have a, a department of suits right. somewhere that, that the sea level people, they were doing all, they were setting up all the things like the strategy. Here's the, yeah. like we, we're going to have a cloud first strategy or something like that. Right. Yeah. So they, they, they laid out the strategy. Hopefully they had a few technical people in the room, probably like the CTO or somebody, right? But is the CTO of the company necessarily uh, the best cloud advocate uh, with, mm. with cloud experience? Maybe not, but he's one of the suits or the person uh, could be a she is, is one of the suits. Who knows, right? The point is when you have new and exciting technology and opportunities and things that you could do, um, and then a uh, um, kind of half disjoint or barely connected strategy mm. and you're trying to make a plan for how to go there. Wow. This is where it gets really interesting because again, you're, you're not only dealing with technology, you're, you're dealing with people. Yeah. 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 And I, I think, you know, that kind of, you know, I think companies need to rely more on the experts than trying to go through it themselves and with trial and error, right? Like, like hiring sure. somebody like you at your company, right? Well, and, I mean, that's incredibly self-serving. I am a consultant, sure. so why wouldn't I say that you should get a consultant? Duh. Right. Uh, if you can find an, an employ or even have people on staff that are sufficiently experienced with the cloud, more power to you, mate. Sure. That's brilliant. Sure. If you can do that, um, if you are kind of understaffed on the real experienced cloud people side and it's challenging to find them to employ them because you know this this is hard it's it's a it's a cutthroat business out there there's a, yeah. a high demand on people with cloud experience so you maybe are not in a timely manner able to find them well then of course get a consultant come on that's sure. just business smart right there but what yeah. i want to say there is not necessarily buy my services duh uh, no, what I want to say is a person who is not always the first one you think about, not always the first one included in those strategic conversations of how to transform ourselves to a cloud first strategy, yada, yada, right. is the HR, the head of HR, the HR department, the, the person who sh- whose job it is to, in- to know which skills the company have which skills they need and how to take people with a certain skill set to another skill set, you know, the training that you may, you may need to get trainers involved and, and, and make sure that you can, <coughs> excuse me, and let make sure that you can tell those people who are in the company ha- that have all the experience of the business and how it works and knows everyone, but maybe don't feel uh, included and maybe are afraid to be left behind because now we have a cloud first strategy and I don't know cloud, am I included? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give them a, a, a plan, give them, a, you know, make them feel included so that they want to come along because yeah. you know, people that know your company and your business and what you're about, that they're leaving, that's a huge uh, just uh, value, just walking out the door. 
Right, right. So, so make HR uh, a first class citizen or, or a, an important member at the table so that they're also definitely involved in this. If your company is large, you have, let's you know, say you have tens of teams, you know, hundreds maybe of, of developers and you have a large IT organization, my gosh, IT <laughs> or sorry, um, HR should be like the first person you talk to. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a big it's a big subject and it's a big challenge for companies, right? It's and I'm sure you see this every day. I don't see it every day. I just hear about it, and sometimes I see it, you know, firsthand. But yeah, I mean, I mean this is what I, I again we have, can probably talk about this for a week, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. um, and more uh, because this is what I see all the time, and I have some kind of war stories out there again, like like the ones that had four thousand plus workloads to migrate. What mm. the heck is that? That's a, <laughs> no. that's a monstrosity and a half, you know? Yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> what a challenge. Yes. Um, yeah. so, so really, there, there are all kinds of things out there when you start looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So going to like the first question we have here is, you know, uh, talking about the journey to the cloud, you know, what are the main steps when a company uh, needs to think about when preparing to go to the cloud. If if they're completely monolithic at this point, yeah, you know, what, and they go, okay, we need to get to the cloud. What are the, the main steps? Right, uh, they need to think about. I mean, there are practical things like you have to talk to your cloud provider. Let's let's focus on Azure here because you know that's sure. what we're closest to. It could be Amazon in this conversation, but let's say it's Azure. Let's yeah. you know we'll talk only about Azure for now. Make it simple for us. Um, talk to your cloud provider, of course, and, and figuring out, you know, what kind of um, relationship shall you have with your provider. You're probably going to spend, maybe you're going to spend in this course of, uh, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five million dollars or whatever mm -hmm. on a cloud provider. You better have a good relationship with them. That's very practical, very hands on and so forth. It's very straightforward. Yeah. Um, what I really like actually about this massive asset from Microsoft called the, the um, uh, the cloud um, uh, cloud solution, the, the cloud adoption framework, cloud solution, mm. cloud adoption framework. Um, mm. Yeah, I think I've seen that. It, yeah. it, it's 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 massive, right? And and they're so it's very comprehensive, is what I want to say. That the, the they have kind of taken in so many experiences from around the world, from different company sizes and stuff, and kind of tried to distill what are all the things that you kind of need to do. And if that was easy, I wouldn't have a job. Um, but if you look at the, the whole framework, uh, the, the asset of documents and pages and stuff, last time I checked was a decent while ago. It was over 700 um, MD files. And I don't know how many pages <laughs> were scrolling, right? I didn't yeah. check for word count or anything. And then there's like 2,000 images. So it's it's a huge asset of all the things that you, you need to think about and care about when going to the cloud. So it's fascinating. Um, high level though, right? You need to know your strategy and go there. And let me approach that from the other side. Sometime into this, a year in, uh, your, your people are working, doing cloudy things and uh, consuming Azure and there are bills coming in from your cloud provider that you're paying and, and uh, workloads are running in the cloud and so on. At any point, you should be able to walk up to like any person in the company, right? <laughs> like the janitor, but especially probably the engineers and ask them, what is our cloud, cloud strategy? What are we doing? Hmm. What's, what do we focus on? Where are we going? What's important? Right. Uh, and they should be able to answer this question. Hmm. And I see so many times that I, when I talk to people on the, venture to say on the floor, but you know what I mean. People that work there and engineers, they're building code or migrating apps or running operations. Sure. I ask them, so, okay, what are you guys doing? What's the, what's the goal? What's the purpose? They're like blank stairs. They don't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that strategy that you start out with when you're making that cloud first strategy or whatever we want to call it, um, make sure that that is always uh, kept up to date and 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 and, and uh, communicated so that people right. know are we focusing on is cost our biggest pinch mm -hmm. uh, or is it that we have very demanding customers who really need to focus on the performance and make them happy or is it that we definitely need to be secure because we did have 
you know, two years ago, we had a break-in, like a like a digital uh, <laughs> break-in, and we, we had we, it incurred some data loss. So security has to be top priority. Or is it all of the above? Which mm -hmm. order are they stack ranked? Right. Do you know that as a person who works in this company? If you don't, how do you know you're doing the right thing? Right, right. right. And so that, so you need to have a strategy and then starting to make a plan for going to the cloud. And that's, this is directly from the cloud adoption framework, right? It's called mm -hmm. CAF. So it's, it's from the cloud adoption framework. You start with your strategy and then you do, it, it sounds like you're doing this one thing first, finishing the strategy, we're done with that. And then you go and do the plan, we finish, we're done with that. And now you get ready to go to the cloud and now you start migrating. Yeah. Obviously not the truth because you're kind of iterating back and forth and you're learning things along the way and you have to go back and maybe even potentially change a little bit on the strategy because, oh, wow, we thought we did one thing and, oh, wow, we didn't know, so now we have to change. But the point is strategy and start making sure that your strategy has a plan for realization, your strategy in technology, and then taking it step by step from there. But I see a lot of disconnect between the people who are going to technically implement said strategy and the people who made the strategy. Because right. the people who made the strategy mostly are not technical people. Mm -hmm. They are, well, non-technical people. They're muggles. So they right. don't know magic. <laughs> they don't know magic. Yeah. But the geeks, right, um, mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of, of the house who are magical, who know, who know technology, they don't know the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow, uh, this, is, yeah. this is what I said. So in this space, I work a lot to ensure to uh, make that reasonable for people. Mm -hmm. And in, in your experience uh, with the companies you've worked at that are, that are going from zero to the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what's like the most, the biggest challenges they have had with that process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. It's it's a pretty broad question. Yeah, so now, yeah. When I say it like when I lay out the kind of things that I just said, like now it sounds like it's all hope, hopeless and everybody is just really bad at what they do. It's not the case. No, no, there are no, so no, many great people out there, you know, sure. super profound engineers and architects and people that know their stuff and really, really are good at what they do. Um, mm. Of course, I think that any any sufficiently large company would agree with this this general statement that they never have enough of those, mm. never have enough of those. Right. And now we're doing something different that we haven't done in a bit. So we're 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 going to the cloud, and that's not that's new to us or mm. newish. We don't we knew we knew our old IT. We did that for twenty five years. We know everything about it, and we're really good at that. And then can we take advantage of all the things in the cloud? So knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. when you start up, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have two projects. I always say two projects, not one, because if you have one project and that fails, then you have zero. If you have yeah. two projects and one fails, you still have, like you have a backup. So take the two first, very first projects at the very start of it, make sure that you have some cloud people on there on those projects to migrate something or build something in the cloud or whatever, and make them start right away. Forget right. about the cost for now and the performance, and I don't care. Uh, just make sure that they start doing something. Right. Because the organization needs to get the basic experiences, like receiving an invoice, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at the number and you're like, ooh, ooh, that's a lot of money, or whatever happens, right? But if, mm -hmm. you, if you're waiting for too long before you're, you're planning and planning and planning and planning and never happens, uh, then you're, you're planning yourself to death. You need to start getting some invoices. It doesn't have to be a massive project that you start with, like a website sure. or something. Just right. something that starts and happens. And then you, I, I recently actually I wrote a an article uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Microsoft just now for their architectural blog, in fact, mm -hmm. um, where I was talking about that on day two um, of the cloud, and they were talking about this concept called a landing zone. Um, mm. a, a landing zone in the cloud is, is just a subscription kind of set up with a bunch of fluff around it so that it's, it's, a, it's a homey, it's a nice cozy place to start deploying some workloads. Mm. And when you have your landing zone, what, what do you do on day two? Mm. How do you choose 
you had you, you have your 4600 workloads or whatever you have right you have a bunch of workloads that could go to the cloud at some point how do you choose the first ones that was right. my article like what are your considerations when you're picking the first batch of things that you will migrate mm -hmm. um and and um in so doing you also have to think about and here's where we start getting into technology you have to take that strategy that we mentioned and understand what is important. We were talking about that. Is it security? Mm -hmm. Is it compliance? What is it cost? What right. is it? That is what's hurting the most. And then you need to figure out technically, how do we measure that? Mm -hmm. The most important thing or two things or three things. How do we measure that? Right, right. The first workloads that go to the cloud have to show back measurements for mm -hmm that the thing that is important let's say that it's cost let's let's yeah. go there it's cost this time yeah sure uh, budget is is a pinch we have to be smart about this things need to be optimized we really have to get the most value for money in the cloud and so you focus on the first workloads to ensure that you get the the, the all the you know budgeting and and all the things that you can do in the cloud and measure the consumption and, and get the, the, the dashboard set up that show the cost on a daily basis on the trend line and things. And you give that back to the business. You give that back to the bean counters, you know, to the Excel people um, that, that care about numbers uh, mm -hmm. of cost. And you give them something that they can be happy about that kind of speaks to that strategy that you set up, right? Mm -hmm. You do that for the very first workloads. Right. Immediately. Yeah. So now you have a template. Now you have a thing that you just, the next batch of workloads, you do the same and the same, mm -hmm. you keep adding. And of course you refine the method over time, obviously, but you ensure from the get-go, from the first workloads to make sure you give back something that shows that you are following the strategy. Right. Otherwise you'll be lost. And this cost example is a good one because I've had that experience and it is a bad one. Hmm. The experience of having worked with the cloud for a, a year and a half, we're into it, we're, we're consuming a lot of Azure. So those uh, Azure monthly bills, they're racking up. Yeah, You're getting to a serious amount of money and you do not want to be in the position that you are sitting there working in the, in the engineering department on doing crazy things with the cloud and you get you hear some weird fancy dress shoes walking down the court <laughs> and they kind of they're beating the heels into the the the, the tiles uh, outside and they're like going somebody is coming and who is this wearing those fancy shoes in the development department right kicking in the door right comes your 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 cfo the financial officer fuming right with a bunch of pr printed papers in hand right this is the <laughs> asher bill showing like what what's this yeah Can you explain <laughs> motivate what, what's going how are we spending all this money yeah you don't want to have that conversation you know you're on the wrong place when that happens right mm -hmm. so if that was in this case in this example financial was top priority well make sure they know what you're spending and show them that and if they're not happy then you'll know in the first two weeks or first month or first two months not after eight months when you're like <laughs> up to here, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so that's, and I've seen people miss that mark because they are disconnected from the strategy. You know what we did with IT back in the day? IT was a budget, right? So mm -hmm. you had $20, 20 million dollars for IT, for IT. Right. That was the number, right? Mm -hmm. And then that was the number last year. So let's do like a little bit of, What's your what's your what's your ask? What's your budget for the next year here for 2023? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to be 22 million, and then you have a conversation about whether that's feasible, and then you get 22 million of what happens. Mm -hmm. 21, I don't know. Sure. Uh, and mm -hmm. and and that was how non-technical people related to technology in the IT days before the cloud. Mm -hmm. It's like we'll just give you a number, and you'll go away and do technical things. And the techn technology will be working and we can use our office programs and we can use the applications and the customers are happy. Brilliant. Yeah. That's not exactly how the cloud works. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so, so now you kind of have to um, think about it differently because you can now, like, how much does it cost in the cloud? Wow. Um, weird question because we're paying, we're, we're now not, you know, allocating a budget at the start of the year and, and that's mm -hmm. what's going to sustain us for that year. No, that's not necessarily exactly how it works. Of course, calculating what it costs, you know, within reason, mm -hmm. you can do that. But you're consuming um, pay, per, pay per use, right? right? So, right, if you're all of a sudden really uh, popular with your service and you get a lot of customers, well, the cost is going to be higher, but hopefully mm -hmm. the benefit is there because you have more yeah. customers. Hopefully you're making more income, right? Right. So that would be good. But, yeah. but how do we calculate this? Well, like I said before, you start doing it, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing. You, you can't wait. You can't calculate everything to death. You have to start doing it. Right. Uh, and, and, but if you just jump in and start doing things, not knowing whether or not you're aligned with the strategy, that's going to bite you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, you know, that's, I hope everybody listened to what that, uh, Magnus just said, because it's, it's so spot on, at least in the way that I think also, because I, I, I recently had a, co a conversation with a company and, that was, you know, spending two years or whatever to move everything in the cloud at one time. And one of the things I said to them is kind of what you just said is, you know, I said, well, why didn't you start off with just one project as a proof of concept, learn, you know, all the uh, uh, trials and tribulations on how it, uh, to get that into the cloud and then apply that to the other projects that you have, right? But you're trying to lift the entire company up into the cloud at one time. And I just I just don't know how that's gonna work because kind of like you said, they've been spending you know money on Azure for, for years with absolutely no benefit, right? Precisely. Yeah. And and I've, yeah. I've seen uh, one of the worst ones I saw, oh, I, I, I'm not disclosing any company names and you won't, you no, won't yeah, know. Don't do this, that, so I, I can, don't wanna get in trouble. I can, I can say, <laughs> no, but really um, when things, how can things go bad? How do you know when things go bad? Well, right. this company had um, a million dollars in their in, in their enterprise agreement. So it's a serious money, right? It also depends on your size of your company. But for them, a million dollars was was a heck of a lot, heck of a lot of money that they had invested in their enterprise agreement with Asher. So they were going to consume for a year Asher and the amount would would end up to a million dollars. Mm. So it's serious. Um, they had some performance issues uh, and with those performance issues came some customer complaints and people started panicking and uh, they decided to find, you know, while, while figuring out the performance issues, we have to disconnect some of the auto scaling because mm -hmm. it's challenging to, to find performance issues if your, your scale is, is just changing whenever it needs to, uh, all right. of a sudden your measurements are not exact. Right. And this, this, um, for now, we'll turn off the auto scaling for a while. For now, thing turned into several months, and the conversation you need to have in the company and with Microsoft, your your supplier of cloud, when you realize that your enterprise agreement that was going to last for twelve months is spent after seven months. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Yeah. It is, it's a madhouse. It's mm -hmm. really not what you want. And um, I mean, I can't go back and second guess all the choices we made and all the things that happened. And I've, I've had successes and I've had challenges that, you know, things could have been different and better uh, for various reasons. Uh, you sometimes go wrong and nobody likes these. Uh, right. You learn from them, of mm -hmm. course. And this is some of the parts of what I'm kind of now, I don't know, preaching uh, what I'm mm -hmm. what I'm talking about when I'm talking to people like yourself here on this on this show to really uh, watch out for those and don't go to those places where, where things like that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, some of their reasons in this case was that it was challenging for them to have the real conversation about skills mm -hmm. and about uh, whether or not we should invest in reserved instances for our v, v, the VM workloads we were working on, and could we push some of our customers that were using the version of our software on VMs over to using the new version, which was a platform-based, uh, a PaaS service-based uh, cloud-native uh, version of the same. 
Mm. Uh, maybe they didn't want to move and how can we, um, uh, you know, successfully maybe nudge them to, to take that step over, you know, if it's working for them and it's mission critical for them, they don't want to do some changes to some weird new platform. And so it was in that strange conversation that things kind of dragged out with these mm. performance issues that I mentioned. And, and you, you wind up in a place where they were running a bunch of VMs and they were not successfully making a decision whether to invest in the reserved instances. So they were missing the reserved instance costs. So they yeah. didn't know they were in limbo. And in that limbo, they were, they were just, money was just running through their hands. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's terrible. Terrible, terrible, and I'm I'm sure that's not the only you know <laughs> story of of that of that magnitude that people have, and it's hard. And because yeah. it's hard, you have to like really focus and make sure you you understand where you are, get on the right track. Are we following the strategy? This decision does it follow the strategy? Well, do we know the strategy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep yeah. doing that. That's good. Go, go yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, because you know I've heard multiple times now that uh, 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 people have told me, or I've, I've seen it on Twitter or something that you know they they get the sticker shop shock from the cloud and they go back, and I'm going, and then they just move everything back to the way it was, and I'm going, and every time I go, well, wait a minute, you know what was, you know what was the thing, or you know. Or maybe I, I think I did hear this once is what they once they got the I did hear this recently where they got basically the, the, the cost of uh, uh, SQL Azure and they just they, they said, oh, that's too much and went back. Right. Ah. And, you know, and and, okay. and so I think I think, you know, a lot of what you've said on the show today really kind of shows, you know, that you, you need to have a. Uh, a real, well, you keep talking about strategy on the show today, and, and I think that's really what it boils down to. Right? Yes, but but you need to also know sufficiently and much about the technology out there. Right. If the if this you know to your example, if the cost for SQL estimate is sky high and we think we can't afford it, well then you have to know enough to start investigating which other options could we use? Mm -hmm. How could we change that to um, use maybe a SQL database pool? Would that help? Mm -hmm. Or uh, uh, the reserved instances for SQL uh, that you can buy, could that mm -hmm. help? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure they consider this. I'm just saying that there are options. Or should we go with a completely different kind of storage? Do we need to like re-architect something and put some of that data uh, that doesn't necessarily need SQL in a different kind of storage, mm -hmm. and then use only like the mission critical data that are that is frequently changing and so forth in the SQL version. Or should we move to maybe uh, a, can we use a Cosmos DB instead? Would that help? Right. Do you right. even know what a Cosmos DB is? Right. And so the the <laughs> the point of that is you have to know sufficiently much about the technology options and possibilities and variants and things you could do in the cloud and keep that together with your strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, I had uh, uh, somebody from uh, Netflix, uh, cloud, the, one of the cloud experts from uh, Netflix on my show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he said something that I didn't think about, which, you know, uh, that is, you know, one of the things that they do to, to lower their costs, right? Um, with um, uh, whoever they use for the cloud. And I think it's AWS. Um, and that is, you know, most of us all know that if we've worked with the cloud that, you know, you get charged for usage, right? And so, for example, you know, storing a big honking, you know, file for to watch a movie, you know, doesn't cost very much to get it up there. But every time it's pulled, it costs. Yeah, that's where that's where that's where Azure that's where Azure right. right that's where Azure and AWS makes their money is 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 retrieving the data, not yeah, putting it yeah. in, right? Yeah, and then and which so, version of of CDN system is appropriate to use here? Are you using Azure Front Door? Are you using the Azure CDN? Or are you uh, copying the files across the planet so you have them locally stored in multiple locations? Well, that's, or which version are you doing? Well, that's um, that's mentioned he goes yeah as soon as we basically detect that this is being 
you know, uh, downloaded X number of times, we move it off to a local storage. Right? Exactly. And because and now it's local, well, they don't get socked with the, you know, the cost from AWS. Right? Exactly. So, it's, so, it's, so, it's, so it's those forth, kind right? of things that, you know, yes. you just can't say, oh, the cloud sucks. Well, well, you have to kind of look at, you know, what you're actually doing and what you're trying to get out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't know how much time we have left, but I have a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a funny, funny saying when it comes to, to applications, right? You don't know for sure. Uh, one of the reasons to go to the cloud might be to, you know, increase your market. Everybody sure. wants more business. So you're going to the cloud and you're hopefully, you're going to make it global and you're going to be a huge success. The most, the worst thing that can happen to your application, honestly, is that success mm -hmm. because it wasn't built for that right you know if right. you if you if you were had an architecture built for a certain number of usage and and so forth and then all of a sudden you're a whopping internet phenomenon mega success mm -hmm. that could be the most terrifying thing that could ever happen to you yeah. because your architecture was not built for that and you didn't even know how to build that architecture at the time come on <laughs> and so, I know. so that's that that can be terrifying yeah. Uh, so, yeah so you know um be prepared for success. It's really hard to say, or really yeah. hard to do. It's easy to say, um, but but it's it's funny how that is so true that it can be the most dangerous thing that can happen to your application is that you're successful. Yes, that's true. I mean, how many websites go down with uh, whenever Oprah mentions the book? You know, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it's like, or or it's the denial of service by Oprah. Right, uh, and I don't know if this <laughs> happens, you know, uh, every year now, but like. You know, in America, every year, the first Comic Con is here in San Diego. It's yeah. the big one of the year. And it's always here in San Diego. Uh, it'll right at the beginning of summer. And uh, every single year, their website would go down because they only have traffic one day, right? That's yeah. the ticket sale day, right? And every yes. year it would go down, right? And everybody be pissed off and it'd be in the news. And, and those kinds you know. of things, right? Yeah. So there are so many interesting, interesting, and, but it's, it's magical and it's wonderful and it's limitless, right? right. It's, a, it's about as limitless as your wallet, but, but there, there are ways around that. And, and that's, that's called architecture um, and, and really, um, and monitoring and a couple of other things, by the way, but, but really <laughs> yeah, that, monitoring, that is kind yeah. of magical, right? There's nothing yeah. you couldn't, there's nothing you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. right? you, you need to get paid for what you do and so forth, right? But sure. that's kind of sure. included in, in what I'm saying. There's nothing you can't do. And that's magical, right? Yeah. There's there's no more of any of those, you know, limitations on uh, we only have so many so, so many servers. Forget about it. You have all the yeah. servers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't want everybody to think that we're just complaining about the cloud. We're not. We're trying to bring up, you know, things you need to think about you know, yeah. when you're, when you're, before you start migrating to the cloud and when you're in the planning and architectural stages we and things like that. Happy. <laughs> yeah. We want you yeah. to be happy and successful. And, right. and uh, the reality shows that, that there are some challenging, really, really difficult things to, to come, to go around and pass them through on that ascent to the cloud, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, if you're going up there somewhere to the cloud and you're doing something with the cloud, yeah. uh, it's hard. <laughs> so we're already out of time, but I did I did want to sneak in one thing if if uh, Simon doesn't get mad at me, and that is okay. So we've talked a lot about the warnings and and things you need to think about, you know, when you're moving to the cloud. So can you share quickly like one like really great success story that you know some company was having a lot of challenges, and when they got you know once they migrated everything properly to the cloud, that that really helped and improved their business. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I also want to say if you have any questions or thoughts at all, that's my that's my handle right there. Yeah. There. Yeah. You Reach out to Magnus. Tweet me if you need if you need to talk. That's fine. <laughs> um, success story. All right. Well, I mean, there, there was a, a, an interesting company that, that really didn't know what to do, really didn't know how to do it. And and I have to be honest again and say, if you if you're in that position, you want to go to the cloud, you really should be business um, considerate, smart is a wor another word, and, and ensure you get the right experts in the room. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what they did. They got some experts in the room uh, and, and got some training and really started training wheels level. Uh, they, fortunately, they didn't have that rush. Uh, they, they, 
uh, time wise or the pinch you know they, mm. they had some time they had their business on the ground they just didn't want to continue having it on the ground so they had a bit of time which is which helps so they they were able to invest a bit in, in some training and start small with a couple of projects right and then kind of being handheld for a bit that's an investment if they mm -hmm. could, you know if you can make that investment in expertise coming in showing you the ropes giving you the, the directions you get like a, a map and a compass and like uh, you know you pack your lunch and, and a thermos and a blanket in your backpack and and off you go off you go mm -hmm. to the cloud it's over there go in that direction <laughs> i'll show you how to do it right mm -hmm. that is is the the, the golden you know of course you need to strike that balance because if you're really really in a pinch with money and so forth and you can't invest in that well then maybe you should be really careful about going to the cloud at all because it's going yeah. to bite you anyway yeah. uh, if you if your business can't invest in the proper uh, upskilling when you need it be very careful so the happy story here was in fact that they they got on their merry way, you know, they mm -hmm. were like, we're going on an adventure and they like, <laughs> you know, and it worked. And that's, that's a happy, that's a happy case. Yeah. And they're, they're doing, they're doing well in the cloud today. And I, I sometimes I know, you know, they, they come knocking on my door and just want to check in and they're doing well. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the happy, that's the happy story. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I, luckily for me, I do have a real happy story on the, basically the first, uh, you know, uh, uh, cloud microservices I wrote for a company and it, I've shared it before. I, we don't have time to do it now, but so, so I did even my first story is a su su success story, which, yeah. which I still use today years later, because, you know, here's, we had, they had a major problem. They couldn't bring on any customers that they wanted to. And all we did was move this one little piece into the cloud and bam, fixed all their problems. Right. For that, for that problem, it fixed everything. Right. Wonderful. So, yeah, so that's, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of great things about the cloud. I think the cloud is, 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 uh, is, is, is where everything will be in the near future, you know, and, um, and, but. We can talk about that next time. We can talk about ubiquitous and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. So, <laughs> but you have to go there, like with anything, I don't care. If, if we were talking about something in the nineties or early two thousands, you have to go there clear headed with a good plan and good architecture. It doesn't matter yeah. what we're talking about, right? Yeah. That's correct. So, that is exactly um, it. so I did wanna, I'm sorry, Simon. I did wanna ask you real quick, uh, what are you looking forward to the most uh, 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 on this uh, India speaker tour that we're doing? So the first time, those of you who don't know that uh, Magnus and uh, myself and uh, a couple others are going to do the speaker tour. We're going to different cities every day and ending up in Delhi, and then some of us are going to end up in, huh? We need a URL. I'm sure he's typing it right now. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's sleeping. <laughs> URL. Uh, URL. Uh, uh, <laughs> Simon, put up the URLs for the uh, conference in uh, October. Uh, but yeah, so what are you looking forward to the most on this first trip back to India? And in there we go. Yeah. People, 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 people is what I'm yeah. looking forward to the most. I want to see, too. I want to meet all the people. I want to, you know, what's going to happen. We're going to shake all the hands and we're going to take all the pictures and we're going to, you know, speak to people, hopefully inspire and, and learn from them as well and communicate. People is what I'm looking forward to the very most. I've been to India uh, multiple times in, in multiple many locations in india so i'm i'm looking forward to that as well yes but i'm looking even more forward to all the wonderful people of india yes me too i i miss the indian people i really do i i love being Some around there. indian people Some they're so nice there. and welcoming not and, even joking no yeah uh, so nice i i really like going there <laughs> for that aspect right um yes. well i gotta let you go because we're we're over time and simon is uh probably tired from doing he's the like, conference today. Yeah, he's, he hasn't bugged me, so I don't know what's, wow, I, don't know, I don't know if he's still there. Uh, uh, he is. Oh, he, he is because he put up the URL. Yep. So uh, uh, I want to say it's great to, you know, see you again and catch up with you before our Indian trip. And, and I, you know, recently, you know, I was, uh, because I haven't really, I haven't spoken in person since COVID hit. And I don't know if it was early this year or maybe last year when things started, you know, getting a little bit better, I was going, 
you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go to Sweden. I don't care if someone's paying for my ticket because I really want to see. I miss Magnus. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a barbecue in my place at some point my man. and i want to meet your family and all the food that you post on facebook you know it just looks so awesome i want to try some of it so <laughs> <laughs> thanks man yeah well sometime someday soon mate someday yeah. soon yes i hopefully right. soon yes if not this year next year for sure i think because i do sweden is on my bucket list and since i now i have a really good friend there uh i have no excuse not to go right no <laughs> all right well thank you and thank you for spending some of your evening evening with us and i no, i really I, uh I'd, I'd love that discussion as usual and i can't wait to have you back on the show and i can't wait to to see you in october i can't can't wait <laughs> that's gonna be so fun thank all you right. thank you for having me it was my pleasure indeed thank you so much well that was a great uh, uh talk with uh, my good friend magnus everybody I, I really enjoyed he he brightened up my day because you know I, I think I mentioned I'm not feeling good today and so uh, I'm feeling better now because I got to talk to my uh, a good friend Magnus and I've learned some more about the cloud and so I hope everybody that's watching or are watching uh, on this recording later uh, got something from this and uh, and uh, and 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 think more about you know uh, your journey to the cloud and so because so it'll be a successful one you know that's I mean, we all want us. We all want, all of us who speak and write want you to be successful. And so um, hopefully that helped. Um, uh, I want to mention really quick my code performance uh, section on my website. If you, and I'm working, I've been working really hard the last few weeks on trying to get some new benchmarks uh, so I can update some of these articles with uh, done at seven. And I've been having some challenges getting those benchmarks uh, uh, to run uh, fully so I can get a good report out. But I'm working really hard. I'm hoping to get something out next week. So I hope you go to that section of my website and uh, check out performance because we've been talking about the cloud. And you know one of the most important things about the cloud because you get charged on usage is performance. And so that's why uh, performance is a big uh, uh, passion with me right now along with code quality. Um, I have a latest Twitter poll out there. I hope you'll... Uh, 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 go vote on this. I, I talked a, a little bit about this yesterday. Um, and that is the development teams, do you run memory profiling on your projects in near production environment before you release them? And uh, so far, um, only 20% uh, of you do, and that's not good. So um, uh, I want to bring awareness to this. And since uh, most of you um, don't do this, then one of my plans uh, after this poll, it's over to write some articles and videos to help you uh, start doing this. Because like I mentioned yesterday in the Code Quality Conference, um, I've not worked for a single company that would allow me to do this unless I was doing it on my own time. So I, I want to get you on board on how important this step is uh, that I don't see companies making. So, um, and I want to ask Simon a question real quick because he put some up there. I'm not really sure I understood. So, Simon, the the 14.7 was that for yesterday or for last year? So uh, I'll give him a minute to uh, reply to that uh, while we go to the next uh, couple slides. All right. Uh, I want to mention my uh, my code. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, my coding standards book um, that's out there. I have the only pure code uh, coding standards book out there. And uh, some people, a couple of people uh, bought copies of it this month, which I'm really happy about. Uh, I haven't seen book sales in, uh, the whole summer, except for I got a couple this month. So I hope you'll check it out. Uh, as uh, we talked about yesterday at the Code Quality Conference, um, that coding standards is one of the number one priorities you have to have for your team. And so I hope my book um, starts you in that journey or just use it as your coding standards, which has happened in many companies I've worked for. I hope you help me to help the kids in India. I talk about this every month because I'm trying to raise money for the Voice of Slum in India that Magnus and I uh, visited the last time we were there. And uh, so there's a, a bunch of ways you can do that. You can do go to voiceofslum.org yourself and just donate directly, either uh, by buying the kids' uh, school supplies and clothing and things like that, or I think you can uh, send them money also. Um, you could buy a copy of my code performance book. 100% uh, of the proceeds go to the Voice of Slum, or you can go to the GoFundMe page. But somebody um, 
I sent in a payment yesterday. So whoever did that, thank you so much. I, I'm glad I haven't got any uh, people uh, putting money into the fund for a while now. So uh, I'm going to send it off to the Voice of Slum probably next month. So um, you have no excuse not to help the kids and help me uh, and Magnus help the kids in India. And I hope to go back there. I don't know if Magnus wants to go, but I definitely want to vi visit the uh, NGO uh, orphanage uh, when we're both back there in October. So thanks for watching uh, because Simon's busy. Uh, Simon's, those of you who don't know, Simon's a one-man show at this uh, at C-Sharp Corner. And so he's going to be busy the next couple of weeks. So my next show won't be till September 17th. And uh, I'm going to miss you all during that. But I have uh, James Mont Mont <laughs> Montemago uh, coming, uh, who uh, does a lot of videos I really like. Um, uh, he works at Microsoft. And so he does a lot of really great busy videos, uh, mostly around Maui. And uh, I really enjoy them. So I invited him on the show. And so I hope you uh, come on. I, and don't say I invited him because he has long hair like me. That's not it. Uh, I really like his videos. He's a super uh, wickedly smart guy. Um, also, I mentioned uh, earlier that, you know, we're not over COVID. So uh, please be safe. Uh, please listen to your medical professionals. You know, uh, we're still having uh, too many people die in America, at least for COVID. So uh, and um, um, all the blood banks, whether there's COVID going on or not, need your support. They're always in a shortage. And I hope you'll go donate at your local blood bank around the world, wherever you live, um, uh, because they, they really need your blood. And uh, I, I tried to two weeks ago, um, but I couldn't because my uh, blood iron was one point under uh, the, the minimum. And so I've been working on boosting that the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to try again tomorrow. So uh, if I can, I always say this, if I can spend two hours on a machine, uh, having the machine suck platelets and pl plasma out of my arm, you can spend 30 minutes donating red, red blood cells. It's, uh, it's a great thing for your fellow human. Um, also, um, please uh, be sure to email any suggestions, um, comments, whatever you want to rock in the code world at csharpcorner.com. I haven't got any in a long time, so I hope you'll uh, uh, send uh, send some uh, messages for me to uh, have stuff to do for the show in the upcoming episodes. So with that, I'm glad you're all here uh, this week. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on September 17th.